In today's video, we're going to talk about sound settings on your new Kenwood radio. So stay tuned. So as I like to say, you just bought your brand new radio and one of the reasons you bought it other than for all the cool features it has is because it sounds good or it will make your system sound good. Yes. I mean, that's what you want, right? You want it to sound good. Well, most of you want it to sound good. So these new radios are packed full of goodness as far as sound goes. Let's take a look at it. So we have the unit on a source. Let's go down here and let's hit the menu button. It'll come up and say audio. This is going to bring you to the audio page. Now what Ken likes to do is make these cool little folder type things to make to take groups of things and put them so it's easier to find. Like speaker crossover, equalizer, position, DTA stands for digital time alignment, fader and balance, volume offset, zone control, and sound effects. Let's start backwards. Let's go to the sound effects. Now, Kenwood does a really good job of giving you things that are easy to use and have dramatic effects on the sound themselves. So, for example, bass boost. Don't use it. Let's move on to the second one. Loudness. Okay, why don't we want to use bass boost? Most of the songs that we listen to have plenty of bass. Really, the only time you'd use bass boost, is, bass boost is if you're listening to music that has just a really crappy bass sound. The problem is, is more than likely that's not all you're listening to. And when you switch over to something that has bass, you blow speakers. I'm not a fan of bass boost, but it seems like every radio manufacturer wants to put it in. Okay, rant over. Sorry about that. Let's move on to loudness. Loudness is great. Loudness will take and make the music sound good at lower volumes. I don't really think you need to go crazy with it. Personally, I like to select low. Whatever you decide. Drive EQ. Drive EQ in this unit will help to reduce road noise. Next we have Space Enhancer. Space Enhancer virtually enhances the sound space to make it sound like you're in a bigger venue. Even though you're in your car, It'll make it just sound like a bigger car. It'll give you a more spacious sound. You can pick small, medium, or large. It's one of those things you can play with. Pick a nice song that you're very familiar with and turn it on. See what it does. A lot of these things you want to try one at a time and maybe just play that one feature for a day. You can turn all these things on and what you're going to end up with is like, ah, it's all crazy. So I'm personally a fan of Space Enhancer. Especially if you have a smaller system, uh, it really improves the sound. Next is Supreme. Supreme is for CDs, USBs, or iPods. Basically all it does is it restores sound due to compression. So like right now it's in Bluetooth. Most Bluetooth has some form of compression. It's auto on. It'll help to restore, make it sound more like it's supposed to. Next we have Realizer. Realizer has three settings, off, one, two, and three. Realizer virtually makes the sound more realistic. It's kind of like Supreme, just better. It'll work on any source, so it might help your FM sound better. Stage EQ. Stage EQ moves the center of the sound lower or higher. So if you have speakers located down low in the vehicle, like in the door, and you wish the sound stage was up higher, you can go ahead and hit stage EQ, and through the DSP, it'll move the speaker's sound up. It's really one of those neat things that you just kind of sit there and go, oh, wow. So nice feature. Now these are all great. You don't have to do anything other than turn these things on and off to see how they sound. That's it. Let's go ahead and get out of that. Now let's go to zone control. Zone control is real simple. If you're going to do a system where you have a rear seat entertainment, headrests, or an overhead, zone control is for that. It allows you to single zone or dual zone. If you click dual zone, it allows you to tell it what source you're going to play up front, what source you're going to play in the back. close. Go down here. You have your rear speaker volume. 
go back up. Now it will play the rear sound out of the speakers. That's why it gives you the volume control here. Next is volume offset. Volume offset is really handy if you have Volume offset, as you can see, it gives you an independent volume control for all your sources. So if you have a phone that when you're playing it is, isn't all that loud, you can go into the Bluetooth audio, Bluetooth, and you can turn the volume up or down. So some phones just have crappy outputs. This will allow you to turn it up. You can adjust basically every source you have access to. So that they all play at the same level. Balance and fader. Yeah, balance and fader. Oh, the one nice thing is that when I just did this, if I just hit center, it'll put it back. Now we're going to go back to speakers and crossovers. Now, there again, like I said, Kenwood likes to make it as easy or as hard as you want. You can come over here and click car type. There's a couple to choose from. Compact, full-size, wagon, minivan, SUV, minivan long. So let's say you have an SUV. Now you want to pick speaker size. So if you have six and a half, you're cool. Pick where the speakers are at. Are they in the upper door, the lower door, on the dash, under the dash? So let's say they're in the upper door. Do you have a tweeter? If not, select none. If you do, how big is a tweeter? Is it just a standard inexpensive tweeter like a factory? Select small. Now tap on the next speaker. And really, once you get to this point, you just have to answer the two bottom questions. We know it's an SUV, we know it's a six and a half. Let's say it's not. Let's say it's something smaller like a five and a quarter or a four inch. Where's the four inch? There we go, it's a four and three quarters. And it's located in the lower door, so we're good there. Now we want to go to the subwoofer. What type of subwoofers do we have? Well, of course we have 15s, right? I mean, so at this point, you're, you can be done. You don't have to do anything else if you don't want to. The system is set up. It knows what it's doing. It'll go ahead and turn on what it feels you need as a crossover and base blocking. And you can go back, sit, and enjoy the way it sounds. Now, for those of you that don't really want to don't care about any of this. You're like, no, man, this is my car. Okay, you can go back. You can select off. Doesn't really matter what you put in there for speakers. You can fill in all the blanks if you want. So, for example, if you know you have a medium sized tweeter, and let's say you know you have a 6x9, you're good. Come over here and select crossover. Now, what you want to do is you have front, you have rear, and you have sub. You have frequency. You have slope, you have gain, and you have tweeter gain. Now, the crossover that's built into this for high pass will do 50, 60, 80, 100, 120, 150, 180, or 220. So what that basically means is you have this graph over here. This is bass, this is treble. When you're setting up a high pass crossover, what you're essentially doing is removing bass from that speaker because you don't want it to play frequencies that it's not capable of. The light blue line is the front. So as you can see, it's moving. Now, we want to choose the slope. The slope is going to be this line going down. So for example, if we pick six, this is the frequency across the bottom. Let's move this over here to 220. You see how close it is to 100, or as far away as it is from 100. If we pick 12, it moves right on to 100. Pick 18, it moves even more, and if we pick 24, so what this is doing is this is showing you that it is not going to play any of these frequencies here. However, if we go up to six, it's going to play some of these frequency here. This is the volume at which it's going to play these. This is helpful to get you into maybe a lower crossover point. So let's say you want to go down to 100, and you want to go to 24. This will allow you to play a little bit more mid bass and then drop it off so that you don't have it play into the lower frequencies like 50 hertz that it can't do. 
I know this is kind of vague, but it's one of those things that when you're setting a crossover, you want to take it one speaker at a time. Play the front speakers, play the rear speakers, play the subwoofer, play them all together. That way you can hear just the front speakers and see if they're going to distort. Play different songs, play it at different levels. It's very important you get the crossover set properly because you don't want the speakers to fart or make noises or blow. The rear is going to be done the same way. Now the front, if you have selected a tweeter, will give you gain for the tweeter. So if you want to, re let's say the tweeter is just killing it, it allows you to turn the tweeter down a little bit. Now this area here is predetermined by what type of size tweeter you picked. So if you picked a small tweeter, we'll go back, and it's a little less. If you pick no tweeter, this will be grayed out. Now subwoofer gives you 50, 60, 80, 100, 120, and off. And it's gonna work the opposite. So the green line here is the tweeter, or I'm sorry, it's the subwoofer. And you can move that. And you can come over here, let's say we select 80, and we can adjust it the same way. So if we want our, let's say we have an eight, and we want it to play up a little higher than we would, let's say a 12, just to get a little bit more sound out of it. Let's say we pick something like 100, let me pick something like a 12 dB crossover network. That way it doesn't play a lot of, I'm sorry, we pick a 24 dB. That way it doesn't play a lot of vocal and get into the mid-range sound. It just plays up to that frequency and then just drops right off. Um, may sound good. And then of course, the gain controls, just like in the tweeter, if you want to reduce the volume here, you can do it. Let's go back. Let's go back. Next you have equalizer. Equalizer is really the fun part. Once you set up the crossover, EQ is just fun to play with. Um, it has presets. So you have pop, easy, top 40, jazz, powerful, rock, flat, and users 1 through 4. Now, this year, you can just do this. Okay. Now, if you notice up here, it says all sources. Kenwood has two modes which you can run the EQ. One is called source tone adjust, which allows you to pick a different EQ setting for each source, meaning you can have an EQ setting for Bluetooth. You can have one for radio. You can have one for CD, DVD. You get the idea. Or if you're one of those guys that just likes his music, that's like, I've set this cool EQ curve. I don't want to screw with it anymore. Select all source. What this is going to allow you to do is this is going to put the that EQ setting on all sources. Select OK, and boom. Now it doesn't matter what source you're in, it's going to play that EQ setting for all sources. So when you're ready to make your own EQ setting and you're pretty comfortable with what you want, go ahead and select Initialize, set your EQ curve, click Memory, select the one you want it to be, and boom, it'll go ahead and select that as uh, preset one. So now when you're in, I'm sorry, set it as user one. So if you're in user two, go to user one, and there's your EQ curve that you just set up. You also have subwoofer level located here. Next, the big one, time alignment. Now, the great thing there again, if you want to use it, Go ahead and tell it where you're sitting. And it'll go ahead and put a generic setting in your car for that type. You know, it'll, it'll put in some generic numbers. And it may sound great. It may sound terrible. If you want it on front focus, um, you can do that. Select listening position, front right, front all. Let's go back here. And then click adjustment. Now, Kenwood has this cool formula, which you can see now on the screen. Uh, for adjusting the math, for doing the mathematics of how to get these numbers. Once you've done that and entered them in, you, you know, you just enter them in by hitting this. It'll tell you the millisecond delay. So next you have level control. Level control is for, even though you've done the time correction and the speakers have a delay to them now so that they're all equally getting to your head, you still need to turn the level of them up or down depending on how close the speakers are to you. It's basically the second step in time correction. And as you can see, it added in a generic setting. Now, 
these will change depending on the millisecond delays you add. But this is one of those things where you have to sit in the car and you have to listen. And do I need to turn this one down more? Or do I need to turn this one up more? This one is really close to your head, so naturally you'd turn it down as opposed to this one, which is further away. Uh, it may also be the opposite. This speaker might just be killing it because there's nothing ob obstructing it, whereas this one is down low in the door and it needs the volume needs to go up. So it's one of those things you can play with. The moral to the story is, is not everyone out there wants to go crazy, but some people do. This has the best of everything. It allows you to take it as far as you want and back again. I think it, it is a much, it's a great improvement over last year's. So, yeah, whatever. Any, any, got anything? Questions? No, they have questions. Yeah, if you do have questions, leave them down below and we'll get back to you. Otherwise, thank you for watching. You guys can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. As usual, we thank you very much for watching our videos. Uh, if you like them, do subscribe. Otherwise, you guys have a great night. We'll see you later next time. Bye.